When I went to the garden after Mr. Maurice, there were many tables lined up. Wow, this looks amazing. It's like we're going to have a party. Ellie, yeah, everyone is going to have lunch here after the hunt. Mr. Jack is cooking up a roast storm. He'll roast whatever they kill during the hunt and serve it up as a main dish. That's lavish, but that's what's expected from nobles. I strode around taking everything in. Then my leg hit something. Huh? Uh, don't kick it. Louisa came running up to me shouting. I I'm sorry. Uh, is this a box? I looked down and saw that it indeed was a small black box. It had been placed near the edge of the picnic blanket, alongside the gun cases and other hunting items. I think we've read this already. It's a lottery box. It's so his lordship and his guests can decide which ground to go to by chance. I see. Did you put the tickets in already? Yep. Each one either has north, east, south, or west on it. At least you haven't broken my box. I made it after all, so be careful with it. Okay. I'm really sorry. As I looked around again, I saw Mr. William and Mr. Ewan in the corner of the garden. So, I just used this rifle. Oh, yes. You hold it like... Oh, you already know. Perfect. You can practice by yourself for a while. Goodness. The only two who were missing from the party were Mr. Irving and Miss Layla. Uh... Mr. Irving suddenly appeared in the doorway, with Miss Grace following closely behind. Only you, Aunt. Yes. Layla is not coming. I see. Miss Grace looked a little scary. Maybe she is upset with something. Oh. It must have something to do with Miss Layla, probably. Now that everyone is here, let's draw lots. Is this a lottery box? Mr. Williams seemed to ignore Mrs. Grace's grumpy demeanor and called out to the rest of the hunting party. Ladies first, dear sister. Draw one. South. Go ahead. I don't know this place at all, so it really doesn't matter much. But it says west. Now I'll draw. North. Now, Irving? I know already. There's no need to draw. It'll be east. Okay, let me mark that down. Irving is east. <laughs> True. Let's begin. Are we ready? After two hours, you will hear the sound of a gong. That is the signal to return here. With that, the participants took hold of their rifles and went into the woods. Will everything really be all right? As I watched Mr. Irving retreating figure, I unconsciously clenched my hand to my chest in worry. Mrs. Grace seemed angry with Mr. Irving. Mr. Williams seems to be having money troubles, so he might do anything to get his hands on the estate's fortune. I don't know much about Mr. Ewan, so I have no idea what he could do. Ellie, are you okay? You look pale. While I was musing over these thoughts, Natalie had come up to me, her face wearing a look of worry. Oh yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. Oh no, I'm the one who must be thanking you, but I wasn't able to earlier. Hmm? Did I do something? Yes, you defended me when Louisa got angry about my hair, remember? Ah, don't trouble yourself. It wasn't much of a defense anyways. Even so, she shouldn't have told you to cut your hair. It looks so cute. I'm so happy. You think so? As Natalie smiled, Mr. Maurice beckoned to her. Natalie, come here. Yes? Well, what can I do for you? I want you to take this to Mr. Charles. 
I think he'll be in his hut by now. To Mr. Charles. Um... Hmm? Is there a problem? No, nothing. I'll take it. Mr. Maurice then gave Natalie a basket containing a bottle of wine and cheese. Wait a minute. Miss Noelle stopped Natalie, who was about to walk off. Yes? I don't want you going alone. It's dangerous. Someone should go with you. Uh, Ellie, would you please go with her? Is it because Natalie is an apprentice? What should I do? I'll go with her. Understood. Natalie, let's go. Yep, thank you. Natalie and I set foot into the woods, behind the manor. Mr. Charles is the one who maintains the hunting grounds. He has been busy preparing for today. The hut is just ahead of here. Uh, you've been here before, have you? You seem like you know your way around. Oh yes, I've known him for a long time. He used to play a lot with me when I was a kid. Oh, that's right. You're from the village nearby. That's why Mr. Maurice asked you to come. So, Miss Noel wouldn't worry about us getting lost. Yeah, but it's a little scary to go deep into the woods alone. Around here is okay, though. Deep into the woods? Is there something there? Have you ever heard of a black dog? Black dog? Um... It's an evil spirit that takes the shape of a black dog, right? And it kills people. It's an old folktale, so I have, have heard the name many, many times. Yeah, they say it used to prowl deep in these woods. Really? It wasn't killing people as such, but it did target little critters like rabbits and squirrels. But then... Natalie pressed her hand to her forehead her fringe flowing across it. Natalie, did you get attacked? Yeah, I've covered my face like this ever since. I have some scarring. So that hairstyle was to hide her scars. W was there really a black dog in these woods? That's what my father said. I don't remember exactly what happened when I was attacked. But I do remember seeing a black dog. I see. But you said used to, so it's not there anymore? I think so, but I can't be sure. I haven't heard any other stories of sightings or attacks. I doubt anyone would really come here, knowing that such a terrifying creature lurked in the shadows of these woods. Certainly, I would be too scared to come here alone. I see it. Ellie... That's Mr. Charles's hut. I looked in the direction that Natalie was pointing, and as she described, I could see a small wooden hut. The hut is located in the middle of the hunting ground. So that means that Mr. Irving is east of where we are. I glanced in that direction and saw a walnut tree. That must be the walnut tree Mr. Irving was talking about. The one that marks the start of the hunting ground. It stands out among the other trees. Uh. Suddenly, my vision swam. Dulled colors were made vivid as I was forced to remember. I know, that walnut tree. It was in my dream. If my dream becomes reality, Mr. Irving will die there. Without warning, a gunshot rang out, abruptly pulling me back into reality. Oh. A bird that had been perched on a branch of the walnut tree suddenly dropped, disappearing from view. Ellie, what's wrong? You just stopped walking. I need to go. I need to get to that tree. I'm sorry, can I leave you here? I need to go. Sure, I'll be fine here. But why all of a sudden, uh, Ellie? Before Natalie could finish speaking, I ran away from her. Just a little further. 
I stumbled on something and fell hard onto the ground. Ow. Well, what was that? I looked at my feet and found an old hunting rifle hidden in the grass. Why is this here? Oh. The name Oliver was engraved in the metal. This must be the predecessor stolen rifle. Why is this here? I touched the barrel gingerly, and it felt cool. That means this wasn't the gun used to shoot the bird. If it were, it would be much, much hotter. That bird was shot by... At that moment, I saw Mr. Irving holding a rifle heading toward the walnut tree. So it was Mr. Irving who shot it. I'm sure he's off to check his prize. What should I do? Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to repeat the same thing I repeated before. So we're going to stay put and watch. Is this the right thing to do? Is there anything dangerous around? Even if we do get it wrong, maybe we can kind of get some clues as to what's going on. I've watched my lord from my spot. Far enough away that I wouldn't be seen. Mr. Irving made his way slowly to the base of the walnut tree. Uh, suddenly... A loud commotion and a blood-curdling scream. Uh, Mr. Irving? Without realizing what I was doing, I leaped from my hiding place. The scene I met with was... exactly the same as my dream. Uh, it had been a prophetic dream after all. I hadn't expected things to play out exactly as I had dreamed they would. Surely I could have stopped it. I had been so close by, yet... Why didn't I do anything? I was overwhelmed with endless regret and could only wallow in my sorrow. Bad ending number nine. Regret. I should have saved it. Alright. The end. No, skip. Skip, 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 skip. Alright, so what I'll do is go save on this spot over here. Okay, this time we'll run towards him. Mr. Irving, I cried out to him as I ran. Don't. Stay away from there. Ellie, why are you here? I came to stop you. Stay away from the walnut tree. You're going to die. Die? Please. You cannot die. If you do, I... I... Ellie, why do you think I'm going to die? Well, I... I don't have any evidence other than what I saw in my dream. Um, let me look around a bit. I'm sure I'll find something that'll help you understand. All right. Do you believe that there is some kind of trap that has been laid in order to kill me? A trap? I see. Maybe that's what it is. Huh? Uh, don't mind me. I yes, I'd say that is my guess. All right, let's take a look around. I should tread carefully, though. This place is still very dangerous. Okay, first of all, we can assume that the bird is fake. Second, we can point out the gun, because it looks like he... Okay, we got the dead leaves. Ah. All right, I'm going to point out the bird first. It is the bird that Mr. Irving shot. It looks like it's stuck to the branch. That's a pheasant, isn't it? Hmm, wait. 
Is there something on it? What looked like white string was tied to the pheasant. It was fairly sturdy and long. It's almost as if the bird had been hanging. Doesn't look it became in Okay, doesn't look it became entangled here by accident. Had it been tied here on purpose? There are many dead leaves around the tree. But why would that be? I looked closely at the leaves. Some metallic objects had been embedded there in the dirt. What are they? Use memory. This is irrelevant now. <laughs> okay. Uh, it looks like it's just like something on it. Okay. So what am I supposed to do now? mentioned that the bird was stolen. Were they talking about this one? Okay. Hunting ground. I guess the dog. I don't think the dog is really that relevant. Uh, okay, so let me... What am I supposed to do? Okay, now I'm confused. <laughs> yeah? String pouch. Ah. There was talk about a stolen violin string before. Is this the string in question? I've checked all that's here. I'm curious as to what these are among the leaves. What are they? We can ask them or we can dig them out from the ground ourselves. one do we got this far so let's that way we don't have to do it again in case we mess up and let's mess with it ourselves i touched the ground to dig out one of the buried objects and then hey this i felt something hit me with great force knocking me down uh, it hurt what happened ellie I heard Mr. Irving's voice cry out from somewhere nearby, but I couldn't respond to him. Hold on, real quick. Am I going to die? My mind became hazy. With the last of my strength, I prayed. Mr. Irving, please stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> Bad ending 10. The last prayer. Well, at least at this point, we'll get all the endings. Alright, so we have to ask Irving this time. Mr. Irving, do you know what these are? I pointed at the objects glinting in the ground. These are... Bullets. Bullets? Did someone drop them, I wonder? No. These are deep within the ground. I believe they are buried on purpose. On purpose? Could these have killed Mr. Irving in my dream? But how could bullets be effective if they're buried? They're useless unless they're placed in a gun, right? Not necessarily. A bullet can go off if hit hard enough. 
For example... Being hit by a hammer would do it. But of course, bullets are easier to control and are more stable if they're shot with a gun. Is that so? I didn't know that. Would someone stepping on a bullet be enough to set one off? Hmm... I think it's possible, but... Mr. Irving suddenly took in a sharp breath of realization. These bullets... Were they set up here so I would step on them and die? That might be it. This was a trap designed by someone to kill Mr. Irving, then. Ellie, you were exactly right. There was a trap here. I was in danger. Uh, so it seems. I'm just glad to see that you are not hurt, my lord. Thank you. You saved me again. I don't know how to thank you. Your words are enough. I'm sure this means I was able to avoid seeing that scene I dreamed about. I'm glad that I was able to save him. But who? Who would create such a horrific trap? I think the culprit was. Oh, shit. Okay, we're gonna start accusing people now. Okay, so I don't think... I don't think it was Grace or Layla. Because a lot of this happened before she even did. It might be William or Ewan. I mean, they both have motive. But why accuse now? Like, everything is still kind of new. Let's go with, uh... We'll go with William, just to be on the safe side. I don't like the fact that we're kind of making a choice now. Mr. Irving, I would like to speak with Mr. William. Is that all right? With my uncle? I have many questions to ask. I see. All right. Of course. I'll come with you. So... Mr. Irving and I went to the area where Mr. William had been hunting. Irving, what's wrong? Noticing us, Mr. William lowered his rifle and walked toward us. My maid wants to ask you some questions. Would you mind humoring her? Maid? Oh, you. Sure, what is it? I'd be happy to answer questions about my kills. <laughs> If the trap set at the walnut tree was truly set up to kill Mr. Irving, then the culprit would have to make sure that he was in the correct in the correct area. I like how he has plenty of hearts and we only got uh, three. Plenty of roses and we only got three. In other words, the culprit is whoever sent him there. I must prove that it was Mr. Williams doing. I'm too dumb for this. <laughs> this is the lottery box. It looked like Mr. Irving had no choice to go to the Eastern area after the results of the lottery. But that wasn't the case, was it? You'd fix it so you'd have to go. You'd fix it so he'd have to go. What are you saying? Is that what you wanted to ask? Ooh! We got it right! I wasn't expecting that. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Could you please answer her, Uncle? Irving? All right, if you say so. Mr. William reluctantly faced me. You were trying to say that I somehow forced Irving to draw the East ticket, am I right? You sure have quite the imagination. I would love for you to tell me exactly how I would be able to pull that off. Mr. William must have manipulated the lottery. 
To do that, he must have... Manipulated the drawing order. I doubt he did that. He most likely either... Eat it. It, it's either the first two. I don't think he really replaced the tickets, but he may have tampered with the lottery box. We'll go with, um... Since we're already this far, I'm gonna go ahead and save over it again. He tampered with the lottery box. Did you perhaps tamper the lottery box in some way? I didn't do that. Is there any evidence of this? He's right. There is no evidence. Ugh. If I don't express myself more clearly, I won't be able to make him admit his guilt. Let me think again. Mr. William must have manipulated the lottery. To that, he must have... He replaced the tickets, probably. Did you replace the tickets? <laughs> right, right. I knew this. I didn't do that. Is there any evidence of this? He's right. There is no evidence. <laughs> if I don't express myself more clearly, I won't be able to make him admit his guilt. Mr. William must have manipulated the lottery. To do that, he must have... manipulated the drawing order. You manipulated the order in which the tickets were drawn, right? You held the box and encouraged everyone to draw quickly. I think it was important that you drew your ticket just before Mr. Irving. W wait, but how could I make Irving pick the East ticket just by picking the order? It was just as likely for my sister or for Ewan to pick the ticket before either Irving or myself. Hmm. I believe that the East ticket had been removed before the lottery took place to avoid that situation. The lottery box had been sitting near the other supplies in the corner of the garden. You could very easily steal the tickets without anyone realizing. Then, you have the first two people draw normally with East not in the box and return the ticket to the box when it was your turn to draw. This would then force Mr. Irving into drawing the East ticket. How does that sound? His reaction. I think I was right. Uh, and then? Why didn't I apparently want Irving to go to the Eastern area so much? There were several bullets embedded under the walnut tree. I think he wanted him to stand underneath it. Bullets? Seriously? You wanted Mr. Irving to step on them, right? <laughs> you must think I have some incredibly dangerous ideas. What should I say? Okay, I'm not... How is this any of this relevant? Why would it be so dangerous to step on bullets? Huh? Uh, well, because you could die, obviously. Bullets can be set off by stepping on them. Oh, I see. He is the one who came up with that trap after all. Ooh. However, that is an odd choice for a trap in such a wide area. I know I wouldn't do it like that. How would I know Irving would go to the set-up area? Mr. Irving told me that the walnut tree is a landmark for the hunting grounds. I'm sure that because he was in the area that he would look for the tree to get his bearings. You're right. I did see that walnut tree. Then I walked towards it. The reason Mr. Irving walked to that tree was... I don't know. That, I guess. Oh. I can't click on this. So I guess it's either the pheasant or the... It's definitely not the dog. There was a bird tied to the walnut tree. And I believe it was placed there to draw Mr. Irving there. If you kill something, you have to go and retrieve it. That bird was probably the one that had been stolen. And it had been tied to one of the branches using the stolen violin string. <laughs> Mr. Williams? 
Okay, I see. I see. I can't underestimate you. Mr. Williams' face contorted as he forced out his laugh, and his eyes glared at me intimidatingly. However, how can you say all this? You base this accusation on a lottery, and no real evidence. I almost feel sorry for the real culprit, whoever they are. You're saying that you know the true culprit? Yes, I can think of one person. You should think harder. I'm pretty sure that Mr. William is behind this attempt. Is he trying to push the blame onto someone else? The person Mr. William is trying to blame is most likely Ewan. Ewan doesn't know how to use a gun, but he could be faking it. Um, Olive? Who's Oliver? Who, who the heck is Oliver? I don't even remember who Oliver is. The evidence that shows he's trying to blame this person is... Oh, shoot. I don't know. It's not the dog. Uh. Just what is it that you want to say anyway? You're making no sense. Would you just stop? I I'm very sorry. Uncle, blame me. I'll take the responsibility. Irving? Okay, I won't be so hard on her. I'll talk to you later. Understood. Mr. Irving is going to get disciplined because of me. I feel very bad. Let's go, Ellie. Uh, um, I'm sorry I couldn't help. You don't need to apologize. You're doing enough. I'm still alive now because you came after me. Mr. Irving. I'm sure my dream will not come true. At least I helped Mr. Irving. Maybe I should think that I've done the best I could. With that, I returned to the manor with Mr. Irving. That night, as I got ready for bed, there was a knock at the door. Huh? Is that Louisa? Louisa is in charge of lookout. She may have returned to the room after work. But I wonder if she would knock. Suspiciously, I opened the door. You are... Uh... Suddenly, someone grabbed me by the neck. Hi. What are you doing? Don't resent me for this. You're the one who hindered me. Don't worry. I won't kill you here. I'm just going to take you away from this manor. It's not unusual for a maid to run away. If expensive stuff has gone missing too, then that'll be enough of a reason. And that's what I heard as I drifted out of consciousness. Whoever this is, they're the one who tried to kill Mr. Irving. I wasn't expected to find out this way. I couldn't raise my voice or resist. I had literally fallen right into their clutches. Bad ending 11. Criminals attack. Alright, so we got the gist of how... I'm gonna load the game again. This is back when we had all the heart, uh, roses. William, okay, so skip. What were we supposed to do? <laughs> Log. This is what I get for not paying attention. save over it. That way we don't have to do it again in case we mess up.
I'm thinking he would probably blame Ewan. The evidence that shows he's trying to blame this person is... Ah! Wait, no. I don't know, I could be wrong. We use that, that wasn't it. So close, you're on the right track. Let me think again. The person Mr. William was trying to blame is... Ah, okay, so it's not Ewan. It might be... Again, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember who Oliver is. It might be Grace or Layla. Um, Grace. The evidence that shows he's trying to blame this person is... What the... Oh... I didn't think it was so much to be the rifle, but the actual, the string pouch. Ah, okay, Oliver. Ah, okay. The predecessor, Irving's father, he passed away a few weeks ago. Okay, so if he were to try to blame it on Oliver, he would probably relate it to the black dog. Maybe and keep it more supernatural, superstitious, supernatural. Um, let's go ahead and go with the string pouch because that makes more sense than the, uh, the gun. Oh no, unfortunately, there. <laughs> Here we go again. Oh, it's not showing me the log. No. And what am I supposed to do? I don't remember. What is this? I don't understand. Can you convince him of what? Ow! The evidence that shows he's trying to blame this person is it could be the hunting rifle. Is Mr. Oliver the one who you believe is the true culprit? Yes. You heard his words during the seance, right? My brother wanted Irving to be eliminated. I see. That's why this rifle was placed close to the trap. Because you want to place blame on Mr. Oliver. Huh? <laughs> You've already found the rifle, huh? You thought that if you could make it look like Mr. Irving had been shot by Mr. Oliver's rifle, then everyone would assume that it was Mr. Oliver that killed him, right? 
Well, obviously, anyone who saw that rifle nearby would have thought my brother killed his only son. Especially after that seance. Mr. Williams' plan was to blame a spirit? Ooh, okay, we got that one. But all this blaming others, or faking lotteries, you really do think that I'm behind all of this, don't you? If you continue this line of questioning without showing me undeniable evidence, I will think of it as an insult. Think carefully before you speak. Evidence? I think there is something I can use. But if I'm wrong, and he will say that I'm insulting him, I'm sure... If a maid like me makes Mr. William angry, I can't imagine what horrible things will happen later. But if I don't make things clear now, I don't know what will happen to Mr. Irving. I must uncover the truth, make Mr. William confess, and protect Mr. Irving at all costs. You are the person who tried to kill Mr. Irving, and I can prove it with undeniable evidence. Ah, uh, you've gone and said it now. Show me your evidence. The only thing that I can assume would be the fingerprint. This proves that you are the culprit. Is that... the pouch that had the violin string in it? This is the... How, see, how did he know that that pouch had the violin string in it? How did he even know that that was a thing? Or where she even kept that? That is the evidence? Yes. As there is a fingerprint when you open the pouch. I think it was printed when the spring was broken. When the string was stolen. Is that my fingerprint? Yes. You stole the string to set the bullet trap, right? Please, let me see your hands. It should be the same as with the ones here. I didn't know it was there. I should have been more careful. Well, at least I knew right off the bat that he was the one who did it. So you admit, Uncle. You did everything. N no, that's not right. Not everything. I was only following my brother's directions. You're still saying that? It is true. I received a letter from Oliver. That's why I did this. A letter? This is it. Mr. William took an envelope out of his pocket and handed it to Mr. Irving. I wonder what it says. I peered over the Lord's shoulder as he read the letter. Similar writing to the message from the seance. Was this written by the same person? The letter asked for help in killing Mr. Irving. It said the entire Rockford estate would go to Mr. William if the plot was successful. There was also instructions concerning the plot itself. When I went back to my room after the seance, I found that letter, along with Oliver's rifle and bullets. I'm not sure if it was the work of Oliver's spirit, but I understood that someone really wanted Irving dead. Irving, I don't have a grudge against you. But if you die, then the estate goes to me. Going by the order of inheritance, of course. Did you really want the estate that badly? Speaking of which, there was talk of you now... <sighs> Speaking of which, there was talk of you now being in debt. Yes. If I don't get a lot of money here, I'm done. Honestly, I was worried, but after all, I jumped on this plan out of desperation. I made up my mind when my sister refused to lend me money. Being the younger son, I have no great talents. This is the only way I can get myself out of that rut. Younger son? So, any son who isn't the eldest not only gets no title, they are also barely get any family estate. You've never understood how I feel, Irving. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't. Do you think a person who has stepped out of the way is qualified to succeed the Rackbeard family? What were your thoughts on the responsibility? Don't tell me you thought nothing of it, so as long as you got your hands on the estate. <laughs> Please. Unfortunately, I have nothing to do with this house. I'm only interested in the fortune. 
responsibility as the head of the family. I had never been taught such a thing. Oliver was always the one people guided along. I was just left alone. Nobody cared if I was part of the family or not. Well, I don't think we'll ever understand each other. The circumstances were so different between us. I feel sort of sorry for Mr. Williams. Doesn't mean he can be forgiven for what he's done, though. Let's see. What else I can get him to talk about? Seems like he'll confess to anything now. What should I ask? Ah. Okay. I think maybe we can get some clues or hints as to about the poisoning. Actually, Mr. Irving's wine was poisoned last night. What? Is that true? You didn't know? Not at all. I have nothing to do with it. He wouldn't lie now. After all this, surely. If so, the culprit is... So it's the work of the person who claims to be my father. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Based on the contents of this so-called Mr. Oliver's letter, you did everything except get the rifle and bullets. Isn't that right, Mr. William? Yes, it was very difficult. I followed the instructions, but it was harder than I imagined. Stealing the violin string and the bird. Tying the bird to the tree and burying the bullets. I think so too. I'm not so much astonished that as I am impressed that you were able to accomplish all that. For sure. The bullet instructions are particularly detailed. Set nails to replace firing pins and such. Mr. Irving muttered as he read the letter. And the bullets were more powerful than normal. To pierce the foot that steps on the bullets and shoot through the chest and the head. One question. The plan, if successful, would have made it seem that Mr. Irving had been shot from a great distance. Is that correct? But once the site is investigated, then it's likely that the bullets on the ground will be found. I'd hoped to avoid that by being the first on the scene. Of course it would have been suspicious if I went alone. So I was going to take other people with me. I was going to remove Irving's body immediately before the site was investigated. By saying I was going to have a doctor check on him. Then I was going to sneak back to the site and remove the bullets and all other evidence. I see. If no one noticed the trap on the ground, then people may have believed that he was shot. Yeah, and based on the circumstances, they believe that my brother's rifle was used. If everyone concluded myself had an alibi at the time Irving was shot, then my brother's spirit would have been the prime suspect. Or so I thought. Try to blame it on the dead. I think I've heard everything from Mr. William. The culprit who gave these instructions is the one who was able to obtain Mr. Oliver's rifle then. Mr. Maurice told me that the rifle was placed in a locked room. But could I find the culprit just based on that? Well... Maurice and I have the keys to that room. Then, other family members might have keys as well. And by family, you mean... Not me. And I don't know if my sister has one. I'll ask Aunt later. Another possibility is my brother. The spirit took the rifle out. Like I mentioned, I don't really believe in spirits. It is a possibility, though. Or if somebody took his keys. If that's the case, do you have any idea, Irving? An idea? Do you think there'd be any reason as to why my brother, your father, wants you dead? Instead of answering, Mr. Irving just averted his gaze. Does that mean that he does know why? A father killing his own son is such a horrible thing. I do not want Irving to be the head of the family. The ad ad domino demons must be eliminated. I remember the words at the seance. What happened between Mr. Irving and his father? I felt both confused and anxious about the murderous impulse that surrounded Mr. Irving. Mm -hmm. 
The Ghost of Roses, Chapter 3 That night, after the murder attempt during the hunt, I had a dream again. Red. One of Mr. Irving's skin and clothing turning a deep red before my very eyes. Is this... blood? Someone's still going to kill him. But I saved him. Why? Who's attempting it this time? <sighs> That's when I woke up. Another dream. Is this another vision one, too? Someone is coming after Mr. Irving again. Is that what it is? Uh, only ten minutes left. I look at the clock. Once again, I only had ten minutes before work began. Not again. Oh, I need to get ready. Get changed, do my hair. Hmm? What about Louisa? Uh. I looked around the room in search of Louisa. Suddenly, a low groan came from the bed next to me. What? Louisa, are you still sleeping? Hey, what are you doing? Wake up! Work starts in ten minutes! What? Huh? Huh? Why didn't you wake me up earlier? I only just got up myself. Uh, we're going to be late. Louisa and I hurried to the hall, only to be met by a cold stare. Today, both of you are late. Sorry. Alright then. Give it to me. What's the reason today? I'm sorry, but I had a bad dream again. I see. Louisa? I went to bed late last night. Ah, yes. I put you in charge of lookout last night. That's right. I went to bed because Louisa didn't come back. I, too, had a bad dream. That's why I couldn't wake up. You, too? Hopeless. Now that I think about it, she was indeed groaning before. I wonder what kind of dream she was having. Well, I'll talk to you two later. Let's get the work done for now. Louisa, go help the kitchen. Understood. Ellie, the Lord wants you. So go to his room first, then go help serve breakfast. Uh, understood. Going to the Lord's room again? You've been called there a lot lately, haven't you? Um... Louisa, don't pry. Yes, ma'am. Probably I'm being called for what happened last night. I must hurry. Begging your pardon, my lord. You called for me. Mr. Irving and Mr. Maurice were in the room. Ah, Ellie. We've been waiting. I want you to listen to Maurice's report, too. Report on what happened yesterday, you mean? Yes. I tied up some loose ends concerning the incident we had with Mr. William. Mr. Maurice did indeed look busy after the hunt yesterday. So what happened after that? I know Mr. William left the manor yesterday. He is staying at an inn down in the village. I asked the innkeeper to monitor him. Really? He is in the village then? I think he will be staying at least until the matter has been completely dealt with. I'm sure we want to ask him questions. I agree. Have you talked to the police about what happened? No, not yet. I'm thinking of talking to my aunt first. Maybe they're finding it hard to hand him over to the police, since he's a family member after all. For our part, we're prepared to talk to the police any time. Maurice is working on... oh... Let's call it the preservation of evidence. That's right. I've made a detailed record of the horrible trap with the bullets, for example. I've also cordoned off the area to keep people away. I see. Preserving evidence would indeed be for the best. I'm sure it'll come in handy later. Speaking of which, what about the predecessor stolen rifle? Any new information as to who stole it? No, 
Nothing. Noel told me that the rifle was there for two days ago. Noel told me that the rifle was there two days ago when she cleaned the room. Two days ago? So it was stolen after the guests had arrived already. Perhaps. But who knows, really. Who's behind all this? To think someone would go so out of their way. To try and take the Lord's life. The Lord's life. It's terrifying. Maurice breathed a heavy sigh, then turned his attention to Mr. Irving. I think that's all I can tell you right now. Understood. Ellie, is there anything you noticed? Well, I do want to go see where the rifle was stolen from. Would that be okay with you, my lord? Fine with me. I'll take you to the room. Before that, we need to serve breakfast. We can keep we can't keep the guest waiting. Ellie, help get things ready. Yes. Oh, forgive me, but I must say something. To me? Very well. Excuse me, then. Maurice bowed once and left the room. Well? So you have something to tell me? Yes. Actually, I had a dream again. Dream? You were saying something like that yesterday. You had a dream of me dying. The dream yesterday was like a vision one, too. I was able to figure out where the trap was because of it. Back with the poison wine, too. You said it was your dream that told you about it. Honestly, it's hard to believe. Anyway, what kind of dream did you have today? You were bleeding, Mr. Irving. I was bleeding. Why? Where? I'm sorry. I don't remember anything specific. I see. What I do think I can say for sure is this. You're in danger. Please be careful. Okay. I'll keep an eye out. Please do. I'll keep investigating too. Thank you. I'm counting on you. But don't push yourself too hard. I don't want this danger you speak of to befall you too. Yes. Even in such a difficult time, he is caring about me. Mr. Irving really is kind. So then why? Why is he constantly being targeted? That reminds me. Yesterday. Do you think there'd be any reason as to why my brother, your father, wants you dead? Seems like he knew why. A parent killing their own child. This should be unthinkable. What does Mr. Irving know? I wonder, but I'm sure he'll never tell me. I mean, he didn't even answer Mr. William. Ellie, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. If you'll excuse me, my lord. With that, I left Mr. Irving's room, the question still weighing on my mind. Alright. Basically to the kitchen next. The kitchen staff were busy getting breakfast ready when I arrived. Oh, we don't have enough saute to go around. Uh, never mind, we do. You just took out one plate too many. Huh, I did? But we need six, don't we? Oh, right, one guest down. <laughs> All right, since we got, we finished that one, I'll go ahead and stop here. It's been an hour. Um. I'll go back, look at the recording, and see how everything was. <laughs>